Good evening. Welcome to all of you, both online and in person. We are glad that you are here. First, want to say Merry Christmas to you. We can try that again. Merry Christmas. For those of you that travel to be here, thank you for coming and thank you for being with your family. Secondly, if you would like to fill up the connecting card just so that we can connect with you, that would be much appreciated. We also want to give special thanks to all of you that provided flowers and for beautifying this place today. We say thank you. And to the bells, they're going to be here twice, so thank you for being here. Well, it's a joyful day, so it's a joyful night. Let's do it. Thanks a lot. The people who walk in darkness have seen a great light. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Those who dwell in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. We have beheld Christ's glory. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given. In him was life, and the life was the life of all people. This is a season of prophecy and hope. This is a season for Bethlehem and peace. Days. 
This is a season for shepherds and joy. This is a season of angels and love. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town of David, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of Nazareth. And the angel said to her, Don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but we have the light of life. Together, loving Father, help us remember the breath of Jesus that we may share the song of the angels, the gladness of shepherds, and the wisdom of the wise men. Close the doors of hate and open the doors of love of all over the world. Let kindness come with every gift and good desires with every greeting. Deliver us from evil by the blessing which Christ brings and teach us to be married with clean hearts. May Christmas morning make us happy to be your children, and a Christmas evening bring us to our beds with grateful thoughts, forgiven and forgiven. For Jesus' sake, amen.
A Christmas Prophecy from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 7. This poem promises deliverance from Assyrian oppression, a hope based on the birth of a royal child with a name full of promise. While Judah's king will practice justice and righteousness, the real basis for faith lies in God's passion for the people. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied this nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born before us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Word of God, word of life. Christmas Grace from Titus chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. 
The appearance of God's grace in Jesus Christ brings salvation for all humanity. Consequently, in the present, we live wisely and justly, while also anticipating the hope of our Savior's final appearance. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own, who are zealous for good deeds, word of God, word of life. That's really special. Thank you. At this time, we would like to have all the kids to come forward for our. And as you come, I would like for you to have a piece of candy cane. So I don't have the red and white here, but you can take a piece. They have more. Thank you. you. Get that too. Okay, let's do it together. Yeah. All right. Okay. There's still room for you. Come. All right. Good evening. How are you doing today? Good. What's today's date? 
24 verse also Christmas Eve, right? Service. Now there is a little story uh, that is written in here. It said it was a man who wanted to just give a gift to God, to the Lord, to do something. So he decided to get a candy cane. This is green and white, but I intended for it to be red and white. I didn't find one at the time. The one I found, I live in a car in the city. So that's why you don't have red and white here. So he decided to do a special gift in honor of the Lord. So he got a candy cane. And then what he did was, it was that when he turned it around, the J represent Jesus. How do you spell Jesus? J-E-S-U-S. How do you spell Jesus? J-E-S-U-S. Yeah, that's what he did. Then, when he turned it around, it represent what? A shepherd's staff. And shepherd used it to help with the sheep. If the sheep is going astray, they can put it right on the neck and hold it up. It's also ourselves as a God. All right? So that's what he did it for. And the red, <coughs> let's pretend this is red, represent the blood of Christ that he paid for our sin. The white, Represent the strife, impurity, clean, righteous. And that's what he did. The strife on it represent the pain that he bared for us on the cross. And Christ did that for all of us. So as we come together on Christmas Eve, we come to tell God thank you. We also come as a family. We spend time together and think about the birth of Christ. Do you know what day you were born? <coughs> what is your birthday? Good, I like this. You see, all of us have birthday, right? So Jesus Christ said, have a birthday. The world celebrates on December 25th. What is that, like it or not? The world celebrates December 25th as Christ's day. So this time reminds us of a joy, peace, love. So I'm glad that you spend your time with family. All right. So thank you for coming. Remember, God loves you and your family loves you too. All right. So you having birthday celebration or uh, Christmas tomorrow. You're going to be eating a lot of food. A lot. A lot of sweet. Good thing. Yeah. Are you ready for that? Just eat and sing. So, thank you for coming. And Merry Christmas. I want us to stand and look at the congregation and say, Merry Christmas. Let's stand and do it. One, two, go. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. All right. The Gospel of the Nativity, from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn.
The Crispin Gospel are calling to Luke chapter 2. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of clothing and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to, the Father, glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with his and found Mary and Joseph, and a child laying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known that had been told them about this child. And all who heard it was amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they have heard and seen as it had been told them.
Merry Christmas again. As you all may know, tonight is a candlelight service, and we will be talking a topic, God is with us. Let's get back to the map a little bit, just so we know. Well, as you can see the map, here, Galilee, we see Nazareth. From Nazareth, they came all the way over to Bethlehem, where they had to go, had to walk. And can you imagine Mary being pregnant? And there was a decree that they had to register because that's the town they came from, the town of David. Joseph came from there. So they had to travel from there all the way there. This is not time that something happened. All right? So, get the next area. Just the kind of path that it passed through to get to Bethlehem. That's a shepherd field, according to what we want, Holy Land. That's what it told us. That the shepherds are keeping fear at night, somewhere there. If you stay on the hill, you can really see far down the valley. Beautiful place. That's been kept. And um, I'm bringing the picture. This is a birth, it says the birthplace of Christ. So they put a mark there. Okay. That's what it says. Or maybe somewhere around there. Now, the birth of a child. The birth of a child changes things. Sometimes it changes the life of the family. Because sometimes you don't know who that child may be, but there's a kind of expectancy that this child may become. Sometimes the focus is on the child and not any longer on the adult. And if they have siblings, sometimes the older one a little bit jealous of the younger one because attention has been given. But the birth of this particular child changes things for the world. The birth of Christ changed the world. What happened when you receive your child? For mothers, sometimes they are so happy, they forget sometimes the pain that they had to go through. It brings joy. And for the husband, they are just glad to be there and so happy that, oh, the child has been born. And once the child is born, it brings joy to people. And every child is cute. And every child is beautiful. I don't know why they don't use the word handsome too. But here's the point. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, Christ the Lord. Let us consider this glorious announcement under the theme, God is with us. God is with us. When God is with you, the impossible things become possible. When God is with you, you are able to go the extra mile. When God is with you, you're able to beg it. Even walking this thing can be durable because God is with you. In the case of Mary and Joseph, they were able to go a long way because she knew and they knew the child that they were bearing. They had to go a long distance. God was with them. The text reminds us of the breath of Jesus Christ who came to save humanity. His breath was announced to the shepherds who were simple people, yet they were, in the, first, they were the first to hear about it. Keeping Sheep, flocks at night in the cold, in the desert, in the hills, in the valley, walking up and down. They were the very people that got the news first. It shows that the message of Christ's birth was not just for the powerful, but for all, for everyone. And God could use anyone at any time. It is interesting how the angel used three specific terms in making an announcement of the child's birth. 
Savior, Christ, and Lord. These words carry great significance and give us insight into whom this child will become. Let us take a closer look at each one of them. This picture is bike. The announcement was made there. Two area, both the Orthodox and also the Catholic. The Catholic uh, proportion is not here, but it pronounced that the announcement was made to Mary at those particular places. Savior, for unto us, a, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior. It is interesting to think about the meaning of the word Savior. We describe the little child born in Bethlehem. A savior is someone who rescues or saves people from danger or oppression. So this child has a unique ability to help people in need. Now that period was definitely a tough one for the Jews. What was going on? They were under the rules of the Roman Empire, which meant that they had limited freedom and heavy taxes. It is easy to understand why they could have been anger or eager for a savior who could liberate them from their oppression. If someone could come along and save them from the Romans, I'm sure they could have welcomed him with open arms. But was that the kind of savior this child was born to be? No. A fight later on, as an adult, he could be sentenced to death by a Roman governor. The meaning behind the angel's announcement of a savior being born is connected to the child's name. According to the Bible, the angel Gabriel had told Mary to name her unborn child Jesus. And Joseph was also instructed to name him Jesus in a dream. The reason for this name is explained in the Bible as you shall call his name Jesus or Emmanuel, for he will save his people from their sins. Emmanuel means God with us. The child purpose was to save people from their sin, rather to free them from an occupying army. The name Jesus means Savior. This name signified that he was born to save us from our sins. The Lord saved means the name Jesus indicating the purpose of his birth. Just as God has a purpose, has a reason for all of us. You are born for a reason, and you are on this earth for a reason, and you are going to leave a mark for a reason. When we a Savior who can pull out out of this predicament and rescue us from our guilt and disgrace, and that is Jesus. So the birth of Jesus was crucial to save us from our sin. He came to earth as a human in the flight to serve as a substitute and take the punishment we all deserve for our sin. By dying on the cross, he paid the price for our sin and made it possible for us to be saved. When the angel proclaimed that Jesus was born to be our savior, he could live up to his name and fulfill his mission of keeping us all. Christ is a term that refers to the title Jesus. According to the Bible, the angel told the shepherds that a savior, Christ, had been born in the city of David. The Greek, Christ means the anointed one, who is equivalent to the Hebrew term Messiah. The Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one, the great king, Described from David. Christ the Lord. Now for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. So Jesus Christ came as the Lord. It's truly amazing to think about the significance of the birth of Jesus in the city of David. The idea that this baby living in a manger is God himself in human form is my glory. As you can see up here, shepherds keeping a sheep at night. 
doing what they're supposed to do, and all of a sudden they hear the angel tell them, go into Bethlehem, a child would be born rot. So they left from bed and went all the way to Bethlehem, and they also took guests with them to come and meet a child that would be born in a manger. A manger is a place where they kept, well, you know, when shepherds would keep food, they had a manger, a very little place, warm, a feeding, they fed our sheep in those places. And when Mary and Joseph went there, the story said there was no inn, no place for them to lay, I mean, to, to, to get bread. And there's a reason behind that. It was a busy time. And people in business did not have hotel to allow a lady that has been pregnant to give birth in that place. Because if they do, the place is considered unclean for 30 days. So as a result, they said, well, there's no, 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 no room. It was full. Even though it was prophecy, Jesus was born in a very low and major place, and it keep work and she he was born there when a the shepherd went and found the baby that was born because we're not meeting tomorrow. So I'm trying to just tell you that when the child was born, the worship, the glorify God, and get the news that we have found the Savior. And this Savior called Jesus Christ as a baby was very glad for Joseph and Mary, and they were glad that child was born. And that child changed the world today. That child came to save us a light. For you and myself. That child brought joy for you and myself. That child brought salvation for you and myself. That child is called the Lamb of the tribe of Judah. He died on the cross for you and myself. That child brought salvation, brought joy to all of us. And that child today changed the world. And because of that child, our lives have changed. And that child, every year, people celebrate that child. It's quite amazing and wonderful to find that your child is about to be a king. For any parents, they will be happy, they will be glad that yes, my child is going to do that. Just as sometimes when there is graduation ceremony and people go to the graduation, when they call your son or daughter name, Sometimes people can shout, yes, yes, you did it. I'm so proud of you. I'm so happy you did that. All of the work have paid off. I believe we saw the God in heaven look at this child and say, yes, what you went for has been done. On the cross, you pay it. As a child, you are worshipped. Mary unveiled herself. She did not about you, but was ready to go through the pain so that you can be born. God intercepted Mary and Joseph's life as young couple who engaged to be married. God said, no, I got a plan for you. It's not going to happen that way. Mary asked, how is it going to be done? I call him to the Holy Spirit is going to be done. And when fullness of time came, things happen. Sometimes, God intercepts our life. When God wants to do something, nothing can stop it. So the Christmas season, we rejoice. At the same time, that we pray for others who this season may not be a joyful season for them. They find us up in hospital. Sometimes it's an empty table or empty chair at the table. Sometimes it's sadness. Someone's supposed to be there, they are not there. But at the same time, Jesus did it all for our sake. And God is in control. And God is with us. Amen.
peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. And we share God's peace with one another. Let us pray together. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to test the ground. Receive these simple gifts of bread, wine, and money, and make us messengers of your mercy, love, for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Jesus. Amen.
Thank you for that, Mary, that you know. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it disciples to take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave his disciples to take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shared for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Sitting together, let's pray as Jesus taught his disciples, Our Father, who are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thou is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome to partake of the meal. The table is ready. The body of Christ given for you. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you.
Let us pray together. Almighty God, you make this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence, and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory. May your light so shine, like to reflect the saving presence of the Lord. Amen. The Gospel of Incarnation from John chapter 1, 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him. And with all him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being, in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or the will of men, but of God. And the world became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of his Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. At this time, I'm going to invite the ushers to come so we can light candles. What we light in the candle, we're going to read Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Declare God's glory among the nations. For great is the Lord, and great is to be praised. As for all the gods of the nation, they are but idols. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord, the honor due the holy name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. They are all among the nations. The Lord is King. Let the heaven rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let 
Then shall all the trees of the womb shout for joy at your coming. You will judge the world with righteousness. Please stand as we sing Silent Night, page 281. May you be filled with the oneness of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angel, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the manger, and the peace of Christ's child, Almighty God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. We'll sing the last hymn.
Merry Christmas and thank you for coming. That was a good one. So, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. One more time. It's a joyful time. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Yeah, let's do it one more time. Merry Christmas. Yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming.